Hi everyone, I'm Manuel. Welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to start a new tutorial about a tool that I'd like to use to improve the quality of my code um, or to ensure the quality of my code. I'm talking about pre-commit. A pre-commit is a tool that you can use alongside your uh, control version system like Git um, to ensure that your code meets uh, predefined standards. At its core, pre-commit runs scripts or actions or maybe hooks that checks your code every time that you commit a change in your project. So by doing this, you can always be sure that the code that you're pushing to the repository is always high quality. And for example, if you are working within a team um, and if someone else has to review your code, that person doesn't have to worry about things like formatting, lighting, style, and things like that. It depends on the hook that you are implementing or the standards, right? So it also helps you to detect earlier mistakes. So in today's video, I'm going to start with the environment setup and the hello world. Um, so I'm already sharing my screen, as you can see. Uh, now the first thing I'm going to do is to create a Python virtual environment. In which I can install pre-commit. Okay, now I'm going to activate the virtual environment. And list the dependencies. Okay, there is nothing there. I'm going to install pre-commit okay now let's take a look at the pre-commit version 3.6.2 now I'm going to start a repository a git uh, repository in this folder okay um, to install pre-commit in this repository, we have to run the following command. Pre-commit install. Okay. Uh, pre-commit installed at this location. Now here I'm going to add a new uh, file. Git ignore to ignore my virtual environment. Okay. The next step is to define the standards or hooks that we want our code to follow. And to do so, we have to use a YAML file, a configuration file. And it has to be called in the following way. Dot pre -commit config .yaml. Now, in a file like this, we have to configure all the hooks or standards that we want in our code. Uh, since this is a demo project, I'm going to use a sample, um, a sample configuration file. Oh, no. It was here. Pre-commit sample config. Okay, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to use this part here. That's all. So this is the basic structure of a uh, hook, right? We have the location and the hooks that we are implementing. Let's say that we are interested on another hook. Well, we can do something like this, right? Include another uh, repository on um, the ID of the hooks. Uh, now, in this case, we are implementing uh, uh, four hooks. We are um, checking, trailing what space the end of file feature feature basically verifying that all the files end with a new line check jamal basically verifying the jamal syntax in configuration files and check added large files and this is basically to ensure that we are not committing uh, large files to the repository and if we want we can also include some arguments here and specify the max, maximum size of that, those files. Okay, now I'm going to create a Python script just to show you how this works. Let's say I have my script.pi. Pre-commit. 
print hello world now as you can see here uh, this script doesn't end in a new line and i'm going to add some trailing white space here right and i'm going to create a config.yaml file to demonstrate the check yaml part now i'm going to do something like this Now, as we can see here, uh, we need to use colon here. What well, I'm going to remove that. And this file is not ending in the new line, so I'm going to use this um, file. Now, I'm going to try to commit this code. So, git add git commit. Mm-hmm, okay, sorry, my bad. Okay, failed. Now, as we can see here, uh, three out of those four hooks failed. Um, and the only one that passed was the uh, large files verification because we don't have any large file here, right? But okay, the check jamal failed, of course, because the syntax was wrong. End of files failed because of the, uh, you know, the end line. Um, the what space failed because I had that what space in my function. Now the beauty of pre-commit is that depending on the hook, pre-commit is going to fit the script, right? For example, here in trailing white space, um, pre-commit modified. Uh, the script that were affected by this mistake, right? So fit here we can see how it says fits in a script.pi, right? And it added a new line here and removed the query space. Similarly with the config.jml file, um, it added the new line at the end of the script. Um, now there are things that they cannot fit, for example, um, adding the colon here. Now, if I include those changes and try to commit again, uh, let me show you something. If we verify the history of this repository, we can see that uh, there, there hasn't been you know, any commits yet. So I'm going to commit these changes. And now all the um, the tests or the checks passed. Well, pre-commit can be used for in any other language, programming language, uh, but since I work mostly with Python, uh, in the next videos, I'm going to demonstrate how to use this tool uh, with Python mostly. And I'm going to explain the hooks that I often use. Uh, there are many hooks and they depend on what you are doing, right? What you're trying to do in your project or your code, the standards that you want to implement. So that was everything for this video. Thanks for watching it and I'll see you next one.